Welcome back, guys, to our playthrough of Pokemon Yellow. So we've defeated Brock. We have two Pokemon on our team now. We've got Pikachu, and we have our Nidorino. I'm hoping to get a Moonstone here soon, so that way I can evolve him into Nidoking, which I think will be a perfect addition on the team for a while, um, at least until we can get some of the starters. So we are going to clear this route. We're going to get through Rock Tunnel. This might be a little bit longer. I think I did this in Pokemon Blue, the last playthrough that I did on my channel. So we're going to do the same thing here, take everybody on. And uh, let's see, what are our teams at? Pikachu's at 15. I don't think... So this. So most of the trainers in the area here are like young trainers or lasses or whatever. There might be a like a hiker, possibly. Not a lot of rock Pokemon. These guys, some of them are probably bug trainers. Um, I think... Yeah, bug catchers, rather. We're just going to go ahead and knock them out and do what we can with Pikachu and just kind of level them up to catch up to Nidorino, because Nidorino's going to get a major stat boost once it evolves. You looked at me, didn't you? I did. Spicy broth. Delicious. Last wants to fight. The color palettes in Pokemon Yellow were so fantastic. I really, I really enjoy the improvements they've made from red and blue. Of course, we, I was talking about this in the comments with someone else, is that because Yellow takes such a heavy influence from the anime, you could almost attribute the design of Pokemon and the tone from the anime in particular. Because I think, I think red and blue was very... I mean, I know that their Pokemon is uh, an abbreviation for Pocket Monsters, right? That's obvious. We all know that. Um... But I think there was something very edgy about the monster design for the Pokemon in Red and Blue. Pikachu, or Pikachu, uh, Pokemon Yellow, like, tones that down and, like, smooths that rough edge a little bit, or softens it a little. Um, and we can owe that a lot to the, uh, to the anime. Am I running out of... Oh, okay, 20, I got it, all right. Thundershock had 29, I thought it was nine, uh, power points, and I was like, did I run out somehow and not go to the Pokemon Center? But no, anyway, we were just talking about how it's because of the anime that Pokemon look like this. Hey, I met you in Viridian Forest. Bugcatcher. Because some of the Pokemon designs in Red and Blue, I think, were pretty hideous. But a lot of them were fixed. I was actually looking at, a, at an infographic. Um earlier today before I recorded this, just looking at all the sprites of all the Pokemon, which I kind of regret doing because I thought it'd be fun to kind of like re-experience them with you for the first time since I played this game all those years ago. I'm just be like surprised at what they look like. But I couldn't help myself and there was, and there's some really, really great sprites. Weedle is one of the very few Pokemon that you can't catch in this game. And I didn't I didn't realize it until we had gotten through Viridian Forest and I was like, wait, why didn't we run into like a Weedle, a Cocoon, or a Beedrill? But that Pokemon line is not in this game. Magmar, Electabuzz, the Weedle family, Raichu, um, there's a couple others. Nothing really all that interesting, nothing that I really cared for. I don't think. Let's take a look, actually. I'm gonna Google this real quick. The Weedle family Arbok, Raichu Meowth, Persian. Oh, okay, okay, interesting. Coughing, Weezing, Jinx, Electabuzz, Magmar. Yeah, so none of these I really care about. I'm not a huge, like, Electabuzz, Magmar fan, so I don't really care. Persian was kind of a cool one. Raichu is the only disappointment, but, like, I understand why. Although I do feel like I should be able to catch a Raichu. It's uh, kind of annoying when you look at it, because that means that when we get to the power plant, both Raichu and Electabuzz, neither are available inside. So you're just going to get, like, hit with tons of Voltorb or Magnemite. Because that means even Pikachu's not available, technically, outside of your starter. So that means that, yeah, Pikachu's not available in the game either, if so facto, aside of what you get from Professor Oak. So that means there's nothing in the power plant except Magnemite and Voltorb. And then, of course, eventually Zapdos when we get there. But... Yeah, that's annoying. Nice. Oh, that's right. So they say, yeah, so Ekans, the Ekans family. So I, I read Arbok, but I didn't consider that that means that Ekans isn't available either. 
So it looks like the main Team Rocket Pokemon aren't available. The Ekans family. Damn. The Ekans family, the Meowth family, the Coughing family. Which, again, not a big deal. I couldn't care less, but just found that to be interesting. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Do I have an antidote? I should have some, yeah. That was a weird noise. Are you a trainer? Let's fight. Yeah, we're gonna get this experience up for show. It's also amazing to me that I think that I find that the trainers are all like yellow with like accents of red and other colors that sort of are in that warm palette of, of colors in that in that line to shade it out. In this case, Pikachu and Weedle are also both red and yellow. But I'm wondering why. Like I know I know it's Pokemon Yellow, but a lot of the sprites actually have a wide variety of colors. I find it very interesting that some of the Pokemon don't utilize that. And that the trainers don't either. I'm actually really excited to get to Gen 2 after this once we beat this one. Such a beautiful experience. I got I got Pokemon Gold as my first Gen 2 game. And then I had a friend who uh who had silver and we traded a lot. But, man, Pokemon Gold is one of the greatest Pokemon experiences ever. I remember, God, this actually really frustrates me thinking about this. It brings back, like, a trauma thing. I think I got, like, a, a D in English or something like that. And I had to have, like, one of those stupid progress reports in, I think it was, like, junior high or something that I'd have signed or whatever. And I got grounded for two weeks. And it happened to line up exactly when Pokemon Gold came out. And I got the game, and I couldn't even open it until I was, like, done being grounded. I don't even know why, like, I got a D in English anyway. I think I just, like, skipped out on the homework because I just didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> I was kind of a crappy student. But, but uh, yeah, I remember I remember my friend got Pokemon Silver, and he was able to play, and it just sucked watching him play it while I couldn't. It was devastating, and then I was like, God, finally I can, I can sit down and play the game. That look you gave me, it's so intriguing. You know, it's hard, it's hard too, because I think, like, as a parent, like, I understand you want to punish your, your kids for stuff like that, but, like, I never, anytime I was ever punished for stuff like that, it was never because, it was never, how do I word this? They never got to the root of the problem. I wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't a defiant kid. I was very obedient. But, like, I struggled in school because of ADHD, and I, you know, I wasn't on anything, so nothing could help me. And instead of like, instead of like a parent sitting down with me and being like, okay, like, what's the problem? Let's figure this out together. Like, you don't even have to punish me. Just like, let's just talk about it. You know, let's connect as if that's something foreign to some parents. It was just like, nope, you're grounded for two weeks until you get grade up. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That fantastic parenting that you just did. And I don't know why. I just can't get over it. Like, I'm not like, I guess I'm frustrated just thinking about it. Just like it's, I'm reliving this now. I'm sharing my, I'm opening up. You're my therapist right now. And I just, I was just so mad because it was like, I don't know. It was like, I got my grade up just fine, but it was like, why not try to work with me on trying to, you know, boost the grade or, or help like, I don't know, tutor or have a conversation. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. There's just so many better ways to do it than freaking like, I don't know hold this game over my head and just like let me sit around and do nothing i'm gonna jump down here actually and then battle him you're not wearing shorts they're comfortable and easy to wear i don't know i get that parenting isn't easy but some parents just don't even try they don't even care and it's hard to it's hard to forgive that it's hard to get over it Uh, when I got gold, I got uh, Cyndaquil, and that was fantastic, and I traded a bunch of my Pokemon over. But because it was technically a different trainer ID from Gen 1 to Gen 2, I don't think they listened to me, so I was like, well, that's, that's the point of that. That sucked. That's one thing that I actually wish that Nintendo would look into investing in, is like, 
Okay, first of all, make every Pokemon game available on Nintendo Switch. Every single one. All of them. Like, even if it's through emulation, let us play Red, Blue, and Yellow on Switch. Let us do Crystal, blah, 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 on Switch. Let's do all of them. Like, Gen 2, Gen 3, all, all of them. Every single one. Especially since they closed down the Nintendo eShop for the 3DS. You can't buy those games anymore. And that's really annoying for a lot of people that missed out. I'm lucky to have a copy, but it's still, you know. But whatever Nintendo wants to do, let us get it. Build in a feature that lets us use Pokemon Home and transport our, our Pokemon up to, like, you know, an inter internet-based cloud, an online cloud service or something. And then let us transfer from generation to generation. But in doing that, also, very important, let us sign up for a trainer ID that follows from generation to generation. Why does it have to be a whole new generation? I don't I don't know if maybe there's just something like I didn't think, didn't think about from like a competitive gaming standpoint or something, or maybe there's some other logistical reason why they wouldn't do that. But I, having thought about it for a total of three and a half minutes, I can see no reason why you wouldn't. Like, let us, let us carry that over. Let me have an at, you know, whatever Mark9 username and let that be my ID and let me have like a number or something or like a discriminator after it, you know, mark a nine, you know, pound zero 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 one or something. Eek, did you touch me? Girl, you know I didn't touch you. Ain't gonna be no hashtag me too thing going on here. I kept my distance. But, uh... See, look at that pink. That's what she said. Jigglypuff looks dope. Actually, you know what? Surprisingly, one of the coolest, I think, sprites in this game is Chansey. Chansey looks really freaking good. Really good sprite work. Damn. Got me there. Um, but I think it'd be great to have a, a trainer ID that carried over from one game to the next, so that way when you went from generation generation generation, you could have those Pokemon. And I think it'd be really cool. I think it'd be really cool if somehow, in some way, shape, or form, if possible, if there was a way that like when you transferred your Pokemon over, you could reset their levels, maybe? So that way you could have them Oh god! I don't have an awakening for this. This freaking Jigglypuff is going to wreck me. Do I have anything that I can use? Antidote, Paralyze Heal, stupid. I'm gonna be asleep for like five rounds now. But like, just so that way you could actually use them in battle. Cause like, it sucks if I have level 50 some odd Pokemon by the time I beat gen one and then I go to gen two and I'm starting all over and I trade those Pokemon over and then I can't use them until like I've beaten all the gyms. Don't you dare just open my double click. Oh my god. This Jigglypuff is a nightmare. Dude, let me freaking wait. Ugh. The earlier gen games were so annoying with sleep because you just couldn't break out of it after a lot like a really long time. This is so many rounds. Finally, dude. Yeah, dude, you go... Yeah, Jesus, this Jigglypuff. Freaking a-hole Pokemon. Jeez. Barely made her out alive on that one. But uh, but I understand, too, like, you're going from red, blue, and yellow where you are... Is there another trainer? I gotta be careful. I might need to use another potion. Because I don't want to... I know there's a Pokemon Center here, but I need to be careful. Okay. I think you can probably catch Jigglypuff in this patch of grass like you could in red and blue. But uh, I know you're you're playing as a completely different person in a completely different region, so I guess that sort of makes sense. But like, there needs to be a, a, a synchronization between your generation, so that way it knows it's you. Although now that I think about it, actually, let's double back on that comment. Okay, so I mentioned before, like when you transfer the Pokemon over, you get level 50. If it was your own trainer ID, they would listen to you, and then you could have level 50 Pokemon instantly and like completely destroy. So I guess there's a reason why. But like, if that's the case, like. I don't know. I'm still fine with the idea of them not listening to me. Just let them be my own Pokemon. Let my trainer ID carry over. And still don't let them listen to me. I'm fine with that. They're traded Pokemon. I'm not the, like, I'm the original trainer ID, but I'm not, like, the original, I don't know. There's gotta be a better way. But now I think about it, it makes sense why you can't trade and keep your ID, because that would be, that exploit is just such a massive one. I better take a rest. That tunnel from Cerulean takes a lot out of you. Yeah, no, this is gonna be a long freaking time getting through this thing. Also, there's a dude in here that probably has the magic carp, right? Hello 
Caleb, I got a deal just for you. I'll let you have a swell magic card for just $500. What do you say? Yeah, that's fine. No, I'm good. I have it for the sake of having it. I'm not actually going to use it for anything. Um, but we are going to switch Nidorino to be out front for the tunnel. And it won't be too bad getting through this. But, uh, I'll save it anyway. It's going to be our first encounter with Team Rocket in here, too, though. Hopefully, Double Cake will knock out all the rock Pokemon. What? I'm waiting for my friends to find me here. Oh god, it's gonna know freaking sing too, doesn't it? Ugh. Let's reorganize these real quick. Pound me, fairy. Find a moonstone around here. See, I like the color of this cave too. I think the design looks really good. Should be some items around here somewhere. TM12. What is this one? Oh, water gun. Useless. Damn, I was hoping we'd find a moonstone. Blue bat. Suspicious men are in the cave. What about you? Oh boy. Alright, we gotta make this fight quick. I don't wanna get poisoned again. I don't know, I just keep thinking about that ID thing. Oh god, this sucks. <laughs> that didn't work at all. Alright, let's see. Horn attack. Should do a little bit more. There it is, baby. I don't know. If there was just some way, I don't know, to sink over... <sighs> I don't know. There should just be a rule like, oh, if you're going to transfer Pokemon from generation to generation, that's fine. You can do that but you still have to abide by the badge rules. If it's going from game to game, even if you're using the same ID, I don't know. There's gotta be, there's something. There's something there, maybe, perhaps, in some manner that I just can't, can't think of, but. Geodude has a really cool sprite too. I like the look of it. I think he also actually has five fingers, doesn't he? Well, four fingers and a thumb, I suppose. I should probably have this Pikachu out front just to knock out the Zubat since they're flying types, but I don't really care to grind out. It took 15 minutes to get through all the way, like, up to the tunnel. What? Don't sneak up on me. So, like, I don't know. I don't want to bother. Super Nerd wants to fight. Super Nerd sent out Magnemite. I don't know, maybe there was, like, there's some way where, like, when you trade your Pokemon over from region to region, the levels get reset. But, like, I know then you get into sort of, like, weird complexities where, like, that doesn't make sense, because, like, if you have a Charizard level 50 and you trade it to a whole new region, it's now level 5. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, this doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. That's too bad. I don't know. I thought maybe I had a, had a concept there worth exploring, but the more I think about it, the more stupid it sounds. Ah, oh, come on. Don't you dare explode. Okay. Nice. We are popping up the levels, aren't we? Pikachu needs to catch up. 
Yeah, poison thing. I was just thinking about that. Yes. Leo. Cause gotta be. There's an item. Come on. Geodo. Actually, you know what? So, in uh, in Pokemon Gold, I think it was, is what it was. In Gen Two, the very first shiny that I ever encountered, aside from Red Gyarados, was a level eight female shiny Geo dude. I don't think I've seen a lot of shiny Pokemon in the wild otherwise. I think, well, no, we had a playthrough here and we, well, okay, that's different though. Like, I just casually playing and finding one, whereas I got a shiny Snorlax and a shiny Moltres from doing the reset methods, like, just for hours and I finally got it. But I don't, those don't really count. I was just playing around and Geodude happened to pop up. I think the only other time I found a shiny when I wasn't farming for it was a shiny Pelipper in Pokemon Sword. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. There were some shinies, I think, that we saw in Pokemon uh, Violet. But, I don't know, they made it easier. Like, there were methods to, like, you know, to encounter them and stuff like that. I don't know. Go through this cave to get to Cerulean City. There was one, yeah, there was one other shiny that we got in that, or two shinies that we got that I wasn't farming for. One was Teddy Ursa, and one was, like, that new, like, electric bear thing. Those two were shinies that I wasn't farming for, and then I think there was a couple other shinies that I farmed for after that, but again, I don't I don't count those. Uh, let's see, Hornet Attack here. But yeah, Geodude, was, Geodude was, my, was my first one. And I think it was on a later playthrough. It wasn't on, like, my first playthrough of Pokemon Gold, either. It was Gyarados, because that's, like, a given. Everybody gets that one. Pokemon Arceus had a few, a few shinies as well. And those ones are unique because they made special noises. Like, unique noises that you could hear off in the distance to let you know a shiny was nearby, which I really, really liked. I was actually really disappointed to find out Scarlet didn't have that. And as a reminder for those of you guys that are watching Pokemon Yellow as a playthrough here, technically, while shinies don't exist, there is a way to get shinies from red, blue, and yellow. So according to someone who's dropping some comments, if you look this up, you could probably verify the information, but the Pokemon all have unique, specific stats in this game, right? And apparently, if certain Pokemon that you catch have a certain stat value, then when you trade them to a Pokemon generation that has shiny Pokemon in it, so Gen 2 and beyond, the Pokemon will appear shiny. So it's possible, technically, to get like, I don't know, a Charmander in this game, have a unique stat value, and then trade it to Gen 2, and then, whoa, it's shiny now. So it's, def it's possible to do that. I didn't know that until my Pokemon Blue playthrough, which is the previous game prior to this one, which I thought was very fascinating. But I don't I don't have the patience for that. There's just there's just not a chance I'm doing that. Like there's no way I'm gonna sit there and look for specific stats on a Pokemon. Cause it's Wow, it's way bigger in here than I thought. That's what she said. Cause like you gotta remember, it's one thing if you're just like doing an encounter, it's shiny, it's not, okay, reset rinse and repeat. It's a whole other thing if you have to inspect the stats, and then you have to verify, and then you gotta double check and make sure, and you have to go through the menu, and like all these other extra little things. It's just not efficient. Does Double Kick do a lot of damage to Oddish? Probably not, huh? Yeah, it's not very good. He's gonna hit me with a powder, isn't he? This punk. Okay, good. Did nothing, though. One HP. One attack should be alright. Yeah, it does a lot of damage, but it's not its not inherently a powerful attack. I'm surprised that it's taking these guys out one hit at a time. Yeah, Bellsprout kind of got the short end, didn't he? As far as sprite design is concerned. Not very, not very impressed with that one. Now, eventually, once we get out of here and we make our way to Cerulean City, this is like the most important city in the game for me because there's so many important things in, Cerule in and around Cerulean City. It's where you get Charmander, it's where you get Bulbasaur, or at least like the surrounding routes and stuff. It's where you can find an Abra. Um... Hmm. 
trying to think. Oh, I surely catch this. This is very rare. Um, it's where you can find, it's where you do the Mew method. Like, there's just so many different things that, that you can do. I will catch Clefairy because of its rarity, not because I actually want to use it in battle. But we're going to Thunder Wave this thing. But yeah, Cerulean City is jam-packed with unique stuff. There's just a lot of things going on in there that are very useful to us. I do feel like Charmander was kind of like shoehorned in in there, though. Like, I guess you could sort of have a logical reason why Bulbasaur is there, but it's weird to have Charmander and Bulbasaur in the same town. But I feel it's probably because it was just like, okay, Charmander and Pewter would be too early. But it would make sense to get it, oh, dang earlier anyway, just because it doesn't have any advantage against Misty. But maybe you get it after you beat Brock. That would make sense to me. Like, oh, hey, I saw that you beat you beat Brock. You must be a really serious trainer. Here, please take care of this Charmander. I'm unable to do so myself or something. Cool. No. It's in my party, but I'm going to dump it in a Pokemon, in the Pokemon uh, box after the fact. Um, let's go ahead and swap out for Pikachu. So I'm not, Magikarp as well. I'm not going to keep them in my team. That's why I'm not updating the, the things down below. We're pulling a big job here. Get lost, kid. Oh, he's still a grunt, so it's not interesting. Nice, I'm glad he threw out a Zubat. That should give Pikachu a massive advantage. Should be a one-hit KO, easy. Are you serious? Brought him down to one HP. That's so annoying. that off. Excellent. So, you are good. <laughs> I am. There's an item over here. Ether. TMO1. Dang. I hoping it would be a moonstone. I don't remember where it's at. I know there's one somewhere around here. Mega Punch. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and teach that to Ma Pikachu. Tail Whip. I always like teaching Pikachu or Raichu Mega Punch. I just feel like it's a very viable move to have as an alternative when you've got electric attacks. Because ultimately, Pikachu's going to know Thunderbolt after we beat Surge, right? So he's going to have Thunderbolt, Mega Punch, probably Thunder, and then Thunder Wave as well. Where the heck was that other ladder? There it is. This seems a little different than the red and blue path, wasn't it? I don't... I don't remember it looking like this. Team Rocket are Pokemon gangsters. Was it like this in, in Pokemon Blue when we played it? I don't remember this. Ah, crap. Well, we have Mega Punch now. That should be fine. <laughs> Pika! Yeah, okay, man. Should do... Maybe not Knockout, but yeah. No, I expect it to be a little bit more, but that's fine. Imagine tiny, cute little Pikachu just, like, pulling its itty-bitty little baby fist back and then just blasting with, like, a massive punch that just totally takes you out. Rattata. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna kick the heck out of you, Rattata. 
Make a punch. Okay, it went first. That sucks. <laughs> oh, come on. All right, we got another potion. Ugh. Brought me right back down. Dirtbag move. Oh, come on. It went again? I should knock it out anyway as a normal type. Mega Punch should be able to finish it. Yeah. That was annoying. Superb. I hate using another potion, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Just to be on the safe side. There we go. Darn it all, my associates won't stand for this. Is this the stone? Damn, where is this? Okay, so I remember this area now. Just gonna thundershock these just for simple XP so we can collect that and move on. Now when we get to Cerulean, I'm just thinking about Charmander and Bulbasaur. I think Charmander is just a given. Like, it's just given to you by some dude who's just like hanging out doing nothing useful. But Bulbasaur, on the other hand, is given to you, I think, after you meet up with someone that has that recognizes uh, your high friendship with Pikachu. So if you have a good friendship with Pikachu, then you get Bulbasaur as a reward. That is so annoying. That's gonna get very old very fast. Pika! It wouldn't be so bad if it had some sort of like alternative or alternate ref like inflection. I think it's because it also sounds so grainy in, I don't know, voice message recording from like 1985 or something. Where the heck is that freaking ladder? Did we pass that already? I mean, obviously we did, but... Like, how far is it... Back? This isn't complicated, fool. What are you doing? I think it's in the top left. That's where it's at. Yep. <laughs> Never gonna tire of that. That's right, there's, I think there's a hiker up here by the ladder, right? Some, some guy who's got some rock types. Yeah, that must be it. I feel like, I don't remember what Misty's lineup or level is when we face her, but I think this is the Moonstone. Heck yes. There we go. But I think we should be mostly okay to take her on. Little Reno baby, evolved to Nido King. That's pretty cool. There we go, big guy. Sweet. Oh, you shocked me. Oh, you're just a kid. I'm hoping that we should be able to get through this with Mega Punch. I don't think it's going to do that much damage, but I want Pikachu to get the XP, so we're going to try. Uh, it's better than I thought. I feel like I might have also made a mistake getting Nido King so early. There's some moves I think that he learns as Nidorino earlier. I think we should be fine. I'm not terribly worried about it, actually. Heh. <laughs> He's just going through the levels like crazy, isn't he? Nidorino probably had a lot of opportunity to, uh, to get some level ups. And learn some new useful moves. Oh well, there's some TMs I think that Nidokin can learn. And Nido can also learn strength, which is what I think I'll lean on him for.
He's so derpy looking, Onyx. Just such a terrible look to him. I don't know how they settled on that, but... Shocked again. Alright, let's get out of here. I forgot that there were normal grunts in this game. I didn't really... I didn't think that there was going to be... A rocket presence of grunts. Huh, another Clefairy. They are exceptionally rare. Again, that's the only reason why I caught one. Ah, chipped. Little kids should leave grown-ups alone. Yes. Sure. Come here. <laughs> Frickin' quick attack, dude. I swear to God. Thank you. Hard to miss. He survived that? Man, Pikachu's stats are garbage. He's gonna need all the, uh, all the help we can get. His base stats are just not good. I'm lucky some of these guys have flying type Pokemon as their alternatives. Because at least Thundershock has, like, almost no chance of missing. Whereas Mega Punch has been a pain. I need that HP up on him now. Let's grab that. H Pup. I'm gonna save it too just because I have like this weird feeling that the game's gonna crash on me. Okay. Hmm. Mount Moon. I don't know. I just feel like Mount Moon seems a little more complex than I remember. Like it was like because I I upload a new video every day and we beat Pokemon Blue just before this, so technically at the time of this recording, Pokemon Blue is just a couple weeks ago. But I don't remember it like it looking like this. And my memory is terrible. Because chances are it probably is exactly just like this, and I'm just not remembering it because I'm stupid. That's the HP up only gave me one HP. <laughs> Alright. I don't know what I expected, but it just gave me one point boost. It didn't give me anything else. I need to get a lot of money, though, so I can buy all the vitamins and boost Pikachu up. His stats are trash. And it's going to be hard, I think, using him throughout this game, knowing that he can't evolve. Another Clefairy. Did they have a, like, a a boost for running into these things in this, in this game that I just don't know? Probably not worth having Pikachu that low. It's just not safe. It's a hidden item here. There it is. Knew it. Another Moonstone. I'll hang on to that one. Well, eh, why not? Eh, whatever, I'm not going to use it on anyone that I'm going to have at my party. Might as well just evolve the fairy. I don't plan on completing the Pokedex, but I might as well do a little bit of effort in that. Stop. I found these fossils. They're both mine. I'm gonna kick your face in, kid. Ew. Grimer looks like chewed gum that you just find under a desk in a high school, doesn't he? Huh. Okay. Thundershock enough to take him down. Bring it on. I will switch. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Part of me thinks his electric attacks make Pikachu a more viable option because it would take as little damage, but his stats are so low, I'm worried that if he uses self-destruct or explosion or whatever, that it would take Pikachu out in one hit. Plus, Nidoking was able to take him down in one move, so. 
throw Pikachu back out. Hopping looks pretty good. He does, he resembles a lot of Grimer actually. The color palette, the chewed gum looking design. He looks very, somehow he looks flat as opposed to more rounded as he should be because he's like a big floating ball of spewing gas, I guess. I don't know, just a thought. Okay, I'll share. Pikachu jumped out of the way. That's cute. All right, then. This is mine. Beat that kid up and take that one, too. There it is. Finally. Stop right there. That fossil is Team Rockets. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Meow. That's right. <laughs> there you are. There you are. Jesse and freaking James. What's up, dudes? Great to see you. So exciting, man. All right, let's thundershock this little snaky snake. So how does he sting me exactly? What does he sting me with? Poison sting. Poison fang makes sense, but poison sting. Ah. Meow, that's right. I love his sprite too. I'm gonna punch you in the face though. There you go. Oh, he lived. Come on. Oh, you missed. Uh-oh, that might be a KO. Oh, come on with that. Pikachu's gonna be pissed. He should have knocked him out. I'm really annoyed that he didn't. I don't have a revive either. Pikachu is done. That sucks. I did not expect Pikachu to get knocked out, but what do I expect? His stats are just not that good. Uh oh. Gotta use Horn Attack. Oh, he's gonna poison me. Okay, we're good. I think this is the earliest I've ever had an King in my game. I think. Yeah. Nice. Oh, Pikachu got knocked out. That's sad, dude. I feel like a terrible trainer. A brat beat us? Team Rocket, blast off at the speed of light! Love them. Alright, let's get out of here. Go heal up at the Pokemon Center, man. Oh, I can't jump that one. Oh, that's right. Wrong color. All right, Cerulean City, a place of big opportunities and even bigger dreams. What TM was this? I thought this would be Mega Punch, but since it's not, it's obviously something else. Whirlwind, that's right. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna have a flying type on my team aside from Charizard. Is he considered flying fire in this? Oh, the water is blue, that's pretty. I like that beautiful shade of blue. Whoa. All right. Well, here we are. We arrived at Cerulean City just in time. Pikachu unfortunately took a beating. I can't believe Meowth knocked him out. But there's something poetic about that, considering I feel like that's very anime. Sort of, I don't know. Has Pikachu ever been defeated by Team Rocket? I feel like it's happened. I don't know. Whatever. Just seems like it was kind of funny. But Pikachu is going to be pissed. I think when I talk to it, it's going to be really mad. He's not going to be happy with me. Oh, he is happy. Okay, I don't know if that's happy enough to get me Bulbasaur in the next episode, but we shall see. Someone's PC. Deposit. Um, yeah, we will deposit Clefable. I don't think I need to worry about Magikarp, because we're going to get our water type in the next uh, gym, anyway, the next city. Because we're going to have uh, Squirtles available after you beat Lieutenant Surge in Vermilion, so we'll worry about that there. But anyway, this is kind of a longer video because we uh, were pretty thorough in, um, in Mount Moon. 
Did I say rock tunnel area? I feel like I might have said rock tunnel. But anyway, mountain moon. But we're here now in Cerulean City, so we'll go ahead and save it. And we will uh, explore the town and grab some new Pokemon on our team. We'll get our Abra, we'll get our Charmander, our Bulbasaur, we'll get all that. Um, and even Mew as well. There's so much to do here, so there's going to be a very uh, jam-packed next couple of episodes taking on all these little uh, little endeavors and, and objectives. But nonetheless, if you enjoyed this video, guys, show your love by hitting the like button. Do not forget to subscribe. Any feedback for me, leave it in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Also, don't forget to take a look at the description box. There's some links that might be of interest to you, one of which is a link to the Mark and I Community Discord server. If you want to be part of that group, you can chat with me directly. There's also a link to geekoutpost.com, an entertainment media blog that I own, operate, run, manage, design, and write for. It's a great place to stay up to date on the latest entertainment and gaming news, reviews, and rumors if you're into that kind of thing. Otherwise, just know I appreciate you and your time, and hope to see you when we continue with more of our playthrough of Pokemon Yellow. All right, guys, that's it for me. Take care, be well. I'll see you later.